Like a tailbone, who you got the tail on? If it ain't about me, about hold the about face. If you ain't no higher, learn it. The soda in the pot and the fire. Burn it. My face is itching. Ah, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ghost in the shell is an adult action cyberpunk thriller film yeah it's it's a lot more than that that has been directed by mamaru oshi it is also based on a film with the same name by masamune shiro <laughs> i'm starting to hear his name a lot now i don't know if it's because i'm reviewing animes as based on his expertise but hell, um, moving, moving on, moving on, moving on, I'm losing, I'm losing track. It is also produced by Bandai Visual and Manga Entertainment in the year 1995. Cyborg federal agent Matoko Kusanagi trails a puppet master who illegally hacks into the computerized minds of cyborg human hybrids. Her pursuit of a man who can modify the identity of strangers leave Matoko pondering on her own to make up in what life might be like if she had more human traits. With her partner, she corners the hacker, but her curiosity about her identity sends the case in an unforeseen direction. I was a kid watching this anime for the very first time. I wasn't exactly five years old, um, but I was around seven or eight. And when I was introduced with Ghost in the Shell, I was already aware of so many animes that was filled with so much things that made me feel like I should be watching it. I was introduced with X. I was introduced with Evangelion. I was in introduced with so many animes that my my little brain <laughs> could not really gather. And when I was introduced with Ghost in the Shell, I was completely mind blown with what this anime has introduced me with. And yeah, this anime is for adults for a reason. And it wasn't just because of the action. It wasn't just because of the blood and gore, the nudity, and all that other good stuff that this anime is going to throw you with. But the story itself, I was very confused with this anime story premise. But when it comes to cybernetic and cyberpunk thriller films and such as this, there's a lot of them that is going to hit you with that confusion. Especially when it comes to the futuristic justice of what the producers and the directors is going to give us. But as an adult, as me watching this now, the story really does make a lot of sense. It is very simple in a way compared to all the other cybernetic films that I've seen recently. And it's a good thing I did watch it. It's a good thing I did watch it now because it's not just a good film. It's not just a great film. It's not just a film that needs to be praised a lot, which it, which it still is to this day, but it is an indeed masterpiece in my opinion. I mean, for Christ's sakes, this anime is so good to the point where they have so many admintations, they have OVAs, they have series, they have mini films, and they also have a live action admintation that you, you, you can't really avoid this anymore. There's so many good animes that has sold so many to the box offices now to the point where Universal Studios and even Japanese film works get their hands on this and they fuck this up by giving us a live action adaptation. I mean, what they're gonna do with the what they're gonna do with the money anyway? How about make something better? <laughs> That's just my opinion. But moving on, <laughs> I was getting off the hinges for a little bit. But seriously, Ghost in the Shell, I do get why there's so many adaptations. I get I get why there's so much material that they've made after the after the film because of what we have gotten on this film and they want to continue this off so many producers and directors want to get their hands on it so they can start their own little story to see if it can compete with this one but no uh-uh that's just this is just my opinion they may i may i may <laughs> piss off some ghost of the shell fans but let's just face it here we have gotten into the big break of Ghost in the Shell, especially the hardcore fans, because we was introduced with this one. And no matter how many they made, this one will always make it on top. 
And to prove this, the beginning of this anime pulls you in with the visuals of the night cycle of Japan and the cybernetics feels of the cyberpunk style of this anime, of the futuristic city of Japan. And I loved it. I was like, holy shit, this shit looks beautiful. Now to be fair, I was watching this in Blu-ray. I think they have a 4K version of this. But man, I feel like the Blu-ray version is just as good. I, I, now, I may be wrong. The 4K version may pull me and blow me away even more harder. But damn, there was even scenes where there were scenes I had to pause the damn movie and be like, man, this shit look good. This shit look damn good. For a 1995 film, I was mind blown. And I had to watch the DVD version just to see what things they tweaked out, what things that they have improved. And they improved almost everything in a way. And even that version, the DVD version, is still ahead of its time. They don't just show you that in the beginning. They also sh want to show you the gadgets that Makoto was going to introduce us. And the blood and gore too, when she begins to assign her mission, when she tries to take a hit on her first assigned target. And the blood and gore is vicious, man. I mean, the first kill, she shoots a guy in the head and his head literally explodes, kind of give me um, a kite feel where the bullet ignites and then whatever you shoot the guy with, they just rupture like fucking Fist of the North Star. This is manga entertainment after all. But man, like the gore does not disappoint me. I mean, it shows a guy's spinal cord and the brain and all that gushiness just bursts out of out of all all over the place and people are around them like what the fuck and they get covered in blood and shit and they want to introduce us with her camouflage shoot suit as she begins to blend in through the outside of the environment and just being incognito and her being in full nude wearing this outfit this is my entertainment <laughs> they're going to show all this stuff and let's say that they show a lot of exposure they show a lot of nudity they show a lot of nudity i gotta keep saying that because when you watch this anime, you're going to get introduced with ass and titties. So much so to the point where I didn't have a problem with that at all. This should not be a surprise to manga fans, especially myself since I'm a huge fan of manga. But this anime also wants to pull you into the cyborg features of Makoto herself as we get introduced of how, she's, how she was created and how her body gets formed up into a human shaped shell. I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was well done. And then they gave us this theme song of Ghost in the Shell that is not just memorable, but at the same time, it pierces my mind in a good way where no other anime can live up to this theme song. I'm not gonna sing it, because last time I tried that, my voice ended up getting very numb. <laughs> I don't have that high pitch voice anymore, I've gotten a lot older. But it's, it's beautiful, it's creepy, it settles you in, and no matter when they play it, they choose the right time to play this anime theme song of Ghost in the Shell. The pacing of the characters is well done too. Makoto gets, gets introduced with other crewmates to help her in her journey, but I think the bond between her and Bato was very, very well done, very well paced to the point where I did not just care about them both, but I was pulled in with their character development to the point where I cared about everybody else around them. And I thought it was well done. I thought it was well paced. Their bond with Makoto and Batu was more than just a team. It felt like they was more like looking out for each other in a mentor type of way, especially with Batu's character. Batu's character, he looks out for her, he gives her advice, and at the same time, he makes sure that her recklessness and her ego doesn't get in the way of these missions. And she does have that egotistical mind. And by her having this, I don't really mind that with her character because her ego plays a part in these missions. How she beats up people. How she begins to know their predictions before they, inter before they interact with her. But that's what Bato sets her straight. And there's even times where they have these little debates where she even tells them to don't lecture me. I know what I'm doing. Check your own missions whenever you feel comfortable of trying to do mine. I kind of feel they drive up their characters. And there are times where she even acts like a bitch at times. But... I kind of do understand why she feels like this because when they have scenes where she interacts with humans or when she interacts with the environment, I feel as if her visuals of her character begins to feel sorrow, begins to feel jealousy, 
and envy when she be, when she sees the interactions when humans interact with people. If she wants to feel love, she wants to feel what humans are feeling. And it, it gets her into that frustration where she wants to feel like someone does care for her, not for the mission's sake, but at the same time, she wants to feel that dark pulseness of her falling into the hinges of people beginning to fall in love with her and for her falling in love as well. This is actually common with films like this, where they have a cyborg as a main character and they begin to feel something that they have never felt before because they always follow orders and they know that they're a, a cyborg or a robot. But with Makoto's character, they don't really give us enough for us to see if that's her, how she's how she's feeling because she doesn't say it. They want to go by the visuals of how she's interacting with people. And I love that a lot. By me that, by me that makes stories and make novels for a living, I can tell how these producers want us to interact with these characters by how they are looking at people. In Makoto, she always have a sad look on her face. She always have a depressed look on her face. It is not as if she has killed people or she has done so many missions to the point where she's beginning to feel numb of human life, but she sees so much of human life and that makes her feel as if she's standing out because of these interactions. I thought her character pacing was very good to the point where I felt each intention of what the film was giving us with our character. I want to talk more about the action. I have said that this movie is bursting with action and blood and gore. I want to talk about the pacing of the action. By Makoto and Batu doing these missions, I felt like these action scenes was well done too. There was hand-to-hand -hand combat, there was even car chase scenes, there was cybernetic battles, and there was gunplay. And I thought it matched, I thought it did well with the pacing of this film. And it was in a way where I did feel like it was necessary. It didn't feel like, oh, we need to throw this in here, so let's do this. No, there was times where they did need a car to chase these people. There was a time where cyborgs began to act up and they need to use cybernetic abilities. There, was a, there were times where there was back against the wall and they had to use gadgets based on the times of the cybernetic future for them to go around enemies. And man, that scene when Makoto was fighting the guy in the, in, in the middle of the water, that's that scene will always play a big place in my heart when this guy gets pummeled and she talks shit about him man i wasn't getting the feel for this guy i'm like dude just put the fucking gun down and put your damn hands up but they have done well with this i feel like the action won't let you down if you like gunplay watch this film if you like hand-to-hand -hand combat watch this film if you like cybernetic fights watch this film they have every sense of action on here and they have played it perfectly not to say that these enemies on here are lacking any type of innovation. We do have a main enemy here, which is called the Puppet Master. And let's just say that the Puppet Master is vicious. The Puppet Master is threatening and imposing. And I do feel as if when it comes to main enemies in films like this, it's very cliche when it comes to the execution of these enemies, when it comes to them hacking things and why they're hacking things. Hence, humans versus robots. We've been there and done that, right? But what I like about this film is that it brings the creativity of the Puppet Master by us seeing its visual of why they're doing it. And it pulled me into the way where I really do, <laughs> I kind of do understand where he's coming from. And it's kind of fucked up because when we see the eyes of an enemy or a corrupted person, when they show us how they corrupted or why they become bad, it doesn't just make us understand, but it actually makes us relate to their behavior while they're doing this. Because let's just face it here, human beings are a piece of shit. We are the main cause of our own destruction. And I'm gonna have to say, his character is not just imposing, but man, there were times where I even thought that Makoto and Batu would die. Especially the end when she confronts the puppet master. And I'm like, what the fuck? Fuck, I really thought that it was the end for her. Yeah, you won't be disappointed of the main enemy here. Overall, this film will put you on edge. This film will satisfy you. This film, honestly, will bring you into the starting point of any person that is not into anime. You let them watch this, they may want to watch more of anime that's related to this. I'm saying that because Ghost in the Shell is mostly old school anime fans first gig of what they got into anime for and I can I can agree even though my first anime that I've seen was Perfect Blue Aww. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had a I can't say I had a fucked up childhood, but let's just say my, my time of watching the other movie was pretty, pretty bad. Pretty fucked up. But Ghost in the Shell overall is an anime that you have to watch, especially if you are not even aware of Ghost in the Shell's existence. Watch the 1995 version, and trust me, you would not be sorry. Ghost in the Shell, I'm gonna have to give, well, y'all already know where this is coming. I'm gonna have to give this an A+. Plus. actually the longest anime review I've done in a while now. My anime reviews only be up to 7 to 12 minutes, but I cannot edit too much detail out of this anime because it deserves the notability of what this anime is going to be stand for. Hence the bell ringing, knowing that I'm wasting too much fucking time. <laughs> but other than that, that's all I have to say for today. Please stay tuned for more of my upcoming reviews and videos. Hit it your way. This is Hugo, your critic teacher, and you guys have a good day.